I think I had inclinations to be an artist from a very young age. Um, I didn't really take up art until my later years in high school. Mm -hmm. I was always interested in you know, finding a, an avenue for my you know, deeper philosophical questions that I grew up as a you know, classic Catholic family. Yeah. And uh, all those deep questions that you're confronted with that, that were confusing and challenging from very early age. Uh -huh. And I think that that's really ultimately what influenced me. And I'm very much interested in um, grand narratives in my work. So, In fact, what inspires you in your um, the three different artworks that you, you have? What inspires you? Well, the mediums that I work with predominantly uh, is lithography, which mm -hmm. is uh, fundamentally um, it's a, a, a drawing process. Mm -hmm. Um, sculpture um, and uh, and painting. So, uh, through my th three areas, uh, I'm very much driven by um, my concerns for the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, very much driven by my love of the landscape. Um, um, influenced by my mother from an early age. She was always sewing, very creative. My father was very politically active. He was a union secretary on the waterfront for right. forty years. Sponsored many. Maltese family to uh, really? family, family Australia, Australia. Uh, I, um, a founding member of the Good Neighbour Council. So I always had that sense of sort of social duty and so that's really what drives my work. When you've got an inspiration for, an, for a piece of art, how do you translate that into one of the art forms that you have, either, either lithography um, as a painting or as a sculpture? Uh, quite often it will, will start as a quick sketch, quite mm -hmm. often, so I get the idea or it'll start as words um, and then I throw throw drawings around and then they get refined in uh, lithographs um, and, then, um, and then quite often they'll translate directly into the sculptural works. Ultimately you, you have to, I've learned to really have a strong command of my craft mm -hmm. And I think it's a combination of craft and ideas. Um, you showed us before how um, uh, you transferred one of your um, lithographs onto uh, stone. What's the process involved in that? Lithography is sort of like water grease resist method. You're drawing on Bavarian limestone, all the, all the um, stones, um, that the lithographic stones come from one quarry in Bavaria. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a drawing process, and if you look at it under a microscope, there's all these little pyramids of you know, limestone. And when you draw on it with with your crayon, the the crayon sits on the tips of those limestones, so a whole of little dots. And then it's a process of sort of there's a bit of a chemical process that goes on. It's a it's quite a long apprenticeship to describe mm -hmm. it in a minute. So you actually live in Geelong. Yes. You just opened the studio yeah, in yeah. Sunshine. Yeah. Do you find that living in Geelong comes into as well sort of um, it reflects into your work as well? Well, we moved from St Kilda to Geelong. Oh, uh, that's a big we, difference. <laughs> we grew up. I grew up in Essendon. Uh -huh. uh, where we first, when my parents first arrived in '49, we settled in um, West Melbourne. Actually, I'm very much a Melbourne boy. Um, when we had children, you know, 20 years ago, we moved to Geelong, um, and I've always had I've had a very long association to the Otways. So I've been painting the Otways for close to 40 years, and uh, Geelong was you know, an opportunity for us to buy somewhere that wasn't as expensive as St Kilda uh -huh. 20 years ago um, and it was sort of halfway point to the Otway so our local beaches you know Torquay or Point Addis you know the really extraordinary places very strongly influence uh, my work particularly the landscape work I spent five years um, more recently um, working up around Teddy's Lookout the back of the lawn mm -hmm. you know the Otways Polo Bay up in the hills it's, uh, that's, you know, that's what I love to do. What about Sagra? You're also the curator at Sagra. Tell us more about Sagra and your involvement there. I was invited to uh, run Sagra a number, about four, three and a half years ago now. Um, it was a client who had um, bought one of my sculptures and uh, originally started up, started working there, running it full time. Mm -hmm. More recently, I've turned it into an artist run space. So that's sort of, it's one of the um, um, places where um, I sort of curate exhibitions. Um, it's a really beautiful venue and it's a great opportunity for artists within my network um, uh, to show work. Now your work can be seen in quite a few collections um, yeah. here in Australia as well as Malta. 
Yes, sure. yeah. um, uh, you know, looking back at your works and seeing these works that are, you know, out in the public, um, what does it mean to you seeing your work out there? Because I, I think it would be quite hard also to, to let go of, of an art piece that you've been working on for a while. I don't really find it hard to let go. You don't? <laughs> They're like, not your babies? <laughs> well, uh, they never really let you go. They're a part of you. They're yeah. part of you spiritually, I think. Yeah. I think that um, it's important for me to communicate. That's a really mm -hmm. significant aspect of why I produce the work. You know? So my work is out there to be read and to be felt and to be experienced. So I'm happy to see it out there in the world. In many respects, I don't really think too much about what impact. I, I, I have this mantra where I say, engage the process, don't anticipate the end result. <laughs> so really, you know, um, what's most important to me is is the character of what you have to say. Mm -hmm. You know, not not how it reflects on yourself, but really um, what the what the sort of communication between me and the viewer might be, and how it might make them think and feel. We mentioned how you've got three main mediums that you use. Um, which excites you more? I think that, uh, look, I love lithography. That's really immediate to me. And, and, um, and my heroes were Goya and Daumier. And I love the, the sort of political and the grand narratives mm -hmm. that they work with. And so that's really, I love that graphic quality. Um, but really, in the end, uh, what I love more is the idea behind the work. And it doesn't matter what medium that I'm working in. You know, they're all challenging. And uh, when I'm painting, I usually have two easels. One to deal with my psychological well-being and you know, how I feel, and the other one to you know, where I'm in control of the craft. So I work on sort of you know, two modes, and painting can be very challenging. Um, probably painting's the most challenging, sculpture and making uh, in many respects are much more immediate. You also teach um, yes, at a tertiary yeah. level yep. as well. What legacy would you like to pass on to your students? The most important thing that you can give students is, uh, is a sense of confidence and, and an opportunity to express what they think and feel. And if I was to leave them any legacy, it would be to believe in themselves and to, um, and to you know, make a difference in the world and to take control of their own lives and uh, make their way in the world and be entrepreneurial and to, um, and to enjoy their lives. Yeah.